I worked very closely with Jim McLean for a long time. Lucky and man uh, you are, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And he, he talked about a lot of the uh, lessons he did with great players, and, and one that stands out was Craig Norman. Um, he did when, okay for himself. He played yeah, okay out there. He was a decent ball striker, and, yeah. and when they were working together, they talked a lot about, you know, he would put his, his hand in his back pocket and try to feel like his hand was going away from the golf ball or get, getting mm. the right hip pocket to go backwards as opposed to sideways. I want to talk to you today about Live View Golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to core the differences between your feels and your reels. Live View is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. Hey guys, Eric here out at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're talking hip sway, one of the biggest issues we see with amateur golfers. Obviously, not here by myself to my right, Mr. Ryan Hager. Ryan, thank you for coming out. Take a little handshake. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you, sir. Ryan, um, awesome golf coach, Plainfield Country Club in New Jersey. He was just recently given New Jersey PGA Teacher of the Year, I believe. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you um, much. Ryan's got an awesome Instagram. That's where I first saw him. We're going to put that on the screen and down below. We'll also, put his website. If you want to work with Ryan, check out Ryan's stuff. He also does online lessons. Awesome, awesome, awesome coach. So, um, um, in today's video, hip sway, right? So we uh, we have our drill here preset. And Ryan and I were talking a little bit off camera, but I'd like to give the viewers an idea of how the hip should work in the backswing. Kind of first things first. What are some checkpoints that we're looking for? Um, what hip sway even is, right? What that causes and how how we can get out of that. So maybe Ryan, could you explain to us what is hip sway? First things first. Sure. Uh, hip sway, kind of by itself, would be the lateral sideways motion of the hips away from the target in the backswing. And generally that'll cause problems, I, I would say mostly with power and consistency of contact. Yeah. Um, generally a higher handicapper type of issue, um, but can creep into anybody's golf swing if you're not careful. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of one of those things I would say, like if we had to do a broad generalization, which is sometimes not fair in golf, sure. would you say the higher handicaps tend to have more sway of the hips away from the target for a longer period of time? Yes, I would say so. Is that fair? Um, and I think this is, I should have said before too, probably most penalizing with, with iron play. Um, I think even if you look at lower handicap golfers, you'll see more lateral motion away from the target as you get to longer clubs like a driver. Yeah. So yes, I think it's more of a problem for higher handicappers. It does happen for a longer period of time and to a higher degree, and it hurts them the most with irons. Yeah, like poor contact, inconsistencies, and Absolutely, those sort of things. Yeah. Ryan, if you take a setup for us, if you will, please. So let's say you have a normal stock setup and you have like a maybe a seven or an eight iron there, something like that. Yep. If you're working with a player and we were to reference, like, how should the hips work? Like, what amount of sway is okay? That's a what great question. What would be question. too much? So, you know, you mentioned that we have a drill set up here. There's a very clearly a stick set up with about, um, I would say, about a golf ball of space between uh, the side of my thigh or my, my pelvis and the stick. Okay. Um, I think generally that amount of sway is about where I would draw the line. I wouldn't want to see more than an inch of sway during the backswing and then at about the halfway point, you might start to see that go in reverse and that player's gonna start moving towards towards the target. Yeah, and it's, is it sort of the case, like a lot of times what I would think is, are you okay if they sway a little more so long as they get back forward? Yes, depending like, on the no timing. Sway. No depending sway. Depending on the timing. Okay. Um, I think 
it can be used to create some flow off of the ball, uh, give kind of an athletic feel in the backswing. Um, but again, when it starts going the other direction is just as important, if not more important, uh, than the fact that it goes the other way just in general. So I okay. think, like I mentioned a second ago, you know, it's not like you're gonna go to the top, sway, and then kind of in one motion, everything starts going back the other way. You generally will see a little sway off the ball to start the backswing, the turn starts kicking in, and then before they even get to the top, the hips start sort of relocating, recentering, and, and going back towards the target. So if we, if you take your setup one more time, yes, I want to give you my like Air Cogorno um, hip checkpoint model and see if you like that or you hate sure. it. So let's say we're set up here and I draw this line down your your um, right leg, right your yep. hip, and let's go to like the takeaway to just about shaft parallel. So for me, what I see good players do is they more or less stay close to that line at this early phase. I would agree. Give or take a little motion, right? Yep. And it's sort of like from here to the top, would you say, where if anything, yeah, where it comes off. And so do you see that same thing? Yes, I would say that's probably the most common amongst really good ball strikers. Yeah. yeah, some players are different, but that's kind of the general thing. Yeah. When it comes off then, that's primarily coming from the turning? Primarily, yeah. Yeah. I think the, the pressure shift is still continuing to the right as that turn kicks in and starts recentering. Yeah. Um, pressure shift will have a little bit to do with sort of the recentering, but for the most part, it is rotation. So that hit, just to give, let's do a give a visual one more time, Ryan. Yeah. So the hip coming away, let's just, let's go to take away and then just pause again. The hip coming away, we're saying, is basically from the turning and the shifting. Yes. Is that fair? You're sort of yep. combining a little bit of those two elements where the hips are recentered. Yeah. And then from there, it's kind of progressively more forward as we start yep. down. So I think that's a good like overview, right, of hip, of hip sway. Let's say that a golfer comes in, and maybe if you could demonstrate, let's say we've got a golfer who's struggling with excessive hip sway, what that would look like during the backswing. Perfect. So we bump into the stick, hips too far away, lack of turn, right? Yep. Now, if that golfer comes in, what would be some of the things that you would say to them that they need to feel as they're doing this drill? Um, I think the we talked about rotation, but you can totally use the pressure under your feet um, to help that person get that under control. I think generally if you're going to laterally move your lower body to the right like that, you're going to start to maybe see some roll mm. of the trail foot, um, the toe, kind of big toe coming off the ground, if you will, and getting that person to feel like they keep more pressure on the inside of their, their trail foot, uh, maybe feel some activation through this part of their quad even sort of down into their, their calf muscles. Um, that's one way to stabilize that. Uh, I worked very closely with Jim McLean for a long time. Lucky and man uh, you are, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And he, he talked about a lot of the uh, lessons he did with great players. And, and one that stands out was Greg Norman. Um, he did when, okay for himself. He played yeah, okay out there. He was a decent ball striker. And, yeah. and when they were working together, they talked a lot about, you know, he would put his, his hand in his back pocket and to try to feel like his hand was going away from the golf ball or get, getting mm. the right hip pocket to go backwards as opposed to sideways. Love it. And backwards is a reference, obviously, to forwards and backwards for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. So I think those are two really good feels, kind of fe feeling the, the muscles engaged on the inside of the, the trail leg, feeling like the, the big toe of the trail foot stays down on the ground, a little pressure there, um, and then the sensation of like the, the right hip moving backwards instead of sideways. Got it. And then obviously, um, and I'd like you to do a couple of demonstrations if you would. Obviously, when they're practicing, let's just give them a brief. So, we, like, when we put this stick in, they can put, and we've done videos before, we got the stick back here. Yep. But we've never done videos this way. It's part of intriguing to me. Actually, kind of think I like this better. We just have the rod through the bucket. You said about a ball, um, inch or so away from the hip. Yeah. And then just, what, far enough back where you're not going to hit it, obviously, right? I would say that, uh, you know, if you're on a grass range, this would probably be stabbed in the ground. You, you want to be careful yeah. not to, you know, poke yourself too hard. Yeah, no liability um, here. The reason that I put a ball of space in there, I think, is because this is for someone who does sway quite a bit, and this would be like level one, yeah, right? Okay. This is a little on the easier side to, to not come into contact with this. Level two would probably be half an inch closer um, for the person who really struggles with this to create, maybe create some space. 
yeah. right? Or maybe start touching it and try to do a, make a backswing and actually move off of it um, would be ways to sort of make this more difficult or change the feel to um, have additional additional feedback. But yeah, I think you, if you started with just a little space, that golf ball would be um, a pretty good measure for where to start. Let's see that beautiful swing of yours, Ryan. I've seen it. I don't know if the people have seen it. So clearly when he goes through there, you can see too, if we play that back and we'll play it throughout, the, the hip working away from that rod during the second half of the backswing. Let's get, if we can do another one of those, Ryan. Yeah. And like you said, in the beginning, starting with this, ensuring you're missing it. And if that player needs a little more exaggeration, even, even potentially getting it a little bit closer. And you'd be having sensations um, of that inside of that trail leg, that trail foot, and that kind of the trail pocket working back. Even, even if you see someone excessive, like would you even potentially tell someone, hey, like they'll, they'll likely to feel their hips even moving a little towards the target. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Especially if they go way that way. For sure. And I, I think, you know, looking at this in, in two-dimensional video can be sort of misleading. Um, yeah. You know, visually sway, obviously, is this way. When you start adding rotation, and there, there still might be some sway, but the, the rotation of the pelvis sort of starts to maybe mask that or give that person a different feel, but it allows the sway to become kind of functional. Beautiful. I think it helps you load the backswing, coil up, and create some stretch that, that allows you to create speed more effortlessly. Um, it keeps, it kind of keeps you more on top of the ball, which I think generally with an iron is a good thing. Getting too far, you know, away from it um, can be pretty it detrimental to, yeah, it to making good contact. I just want to point out one more thing, Ryan. If you just do a backswing pose sure. from the down the line angle, can you do a bad version with the hip sway? So one of the pieces from here you're going to see a lot is lack of turn. So usually sway and turn will kind of work in opposite. And then when he doesn't turn, you'll see a lack of depth of the butt of the club. That's a big one from down the line. So if you, let's do a good version, if you would, Ryan, sure. with normal pelvis motion. So normal pelvis motion, combining the turn with the sway, you can see much better with the turn, much different with the butt of the club, which really sets you up, right, for not having to compensate for anything during the down swing. Absolutely. That's a yeah, general idea. Generally, I think your swayer is also a slicer. Your swayer the is lack, a slicer. The lack of depth um, generally will shift the path or swing direction more across the ball and cause a lot of the side spin that goes to the right. So, so when someone would do this, and we'll just kind of wrap up with this, I'm going to do a little recap. If someone would do this, you'd likely expect a low point more forward, probably all else equal path more from inside, Yes. kind of higher, a little more draw bias, <laughs> if anything. And then when you're, when you're working with someone and they're doing this in a big swayer, are you going like half swing, half speed to start with? Are you rolling right in? Depends on the person. Yeah, it maybe. depends. I think um, if I could hit one here, probably yeah. the, the um, preference for doing this would be not just at slower speeds or, or shorter swings, but kind of in pieces where okay. you, know, you could even check yourself as you're going here and, and stop at that sort of halfway point. At that, at that stage of the swing, I can kind of check to see where I'm at. If I like that, I'll continue. And kind of pause and, it out. And hit it from there. So you can do it in pieces. It's probably the best starting uh, point for this. Love it. And, and I think that gives you good feel. You can literally check how you're doing things um, while you're doing them and, and yeah. make the changes a little more permanently. More and, purposeful. And, and quicker, yeah. Hip sway, love it. Um, solid contact, easy drill to do it. Kind of an understanding of the, um, the good versus bad, we'd say, you know, most important, the shorter the club gets, as the clubs get a little bit longer, maybe um, a little bit more okay with the hip sway. So we're gonna see more of Ryan here in a couple future videos. Obviously, the guy's got a beautiful swing, awesome coach. Hopefully this helps you. If you guys enjoyed this video, we're gonna put another card on the screen, similar style video. We'll put a card for kagornogolf.com. We'd love to see you there.